I'm Coffee Kevin, and we are, uh, well, we had a little uh, actor problem this morning. Uh, we, we did, I wanted to uh, share the Chemex, the Chemex automatic uh, with you, and uh, this is the original automatic, not the, not the new one that came out a couple of years ago. This is the vintage Chemex automatic. And uh, let me give you a little background on this. Most of the professional coffee makers, I'm talking about commercial ones, not home ones. Uh, most home coffee makers chug through and, you know, deliver uh, water to the drip maker simply. But most commercial makers do something to emulate a manual drip coffee method. And by that I mean, and we'll, we'll, I'll be able to show you when we're actually making coffee, they try to pour a little bit of water over the grounds, just like when you're watching a barista do it or when you're doing it at home with your coffee maker. You put a little bit of water in just enough to get the grounds wet. You let that water go through and you put some more in. It's a repeated action. Most automatic drip makers don't do that. Most of them just keep putting water through and basically the heater can only keep up with it so much anyway, so it's it works out all right. However, when they came out with the Chemex in the 1970s, I believe, uh, Chemex designed theirs so that it had a, uh, a time gap between the pores, just like an actual barista does when they're making drip coffee. And that is ingenious. It's so ingenious that the entire coffee maker trade uses it in all of their, uh, if you buy a Fetgo or you buy any uh, bun, any of them, uh, they all have built in uh, to their programming a way to separate the pores. That's based on this coffee maker. And uh, as far as I know, Chemex, uh, at the time owned by International Housewares Corporation, did not uh, apply for any patents. So the industry, uh, as usual, climbed on the backs of someone else, some little guy that uh, didn't, uh, never got paid for it. So anyway, the, uh, but that's, that's what I wanted to demonstrate today. And I actually dug this out. This was a gift to me. This was given to me by Patrick Grassi, who owned Chemex um, in the 1990s. And his family owns it today. And uh, he bought it. And he, uh, he gave me one from his personal collection and for years, uh, I studied it, analyzed it. It was my favorite go-to automatic drip maker. And uh, finally, uh, Melita came out with uh, IBS, inter inter Interval Brewing System, which basically uh, attempted to emulate what this maker did. Unfortunately, I was going to brew with this uh, today, and... Um, pulled it out and we did a test brewing this morning and um, it's acting up. It's having a bad day. Let's hope it's just a bad day. But I'm going to, uh, you know, I have enough old uh, vintage uh, appliances and gear of all kinds that uh, these things are not unknown to me. And uh, I'm probably getting into the age group uh, very shortly that where I'm going to be the same way. I'm good days and bad days, but I'm <laughs> not quite there yet, I don't think. Uh, however, uh, let's, uh, I'm going to manually brew with this. Oh, before I do that, um, let me give you an update. Are, are we on this shot, this close-up shot or this whole time? Okay, uh, I, just, I just didn't know if I lost contact with uh, everyone. Uh, the, uh, I wanted to update you on uh, CoffeeCon. Uh, we are, you know, we're a few weeks uh, from the 
uh, for August 1st deadline. And uh, we have uh, our zero percent of our goal in percentage, uh, but we do. Uh, we've learned a lot, and uh, we'll probably uh, repeat another one. But there's still time to be part of the first one, and I would urge you to go and at least vote for the city. Uh, it's ten dollars, and it's not going to make a big difference in whether we can uh, put any of them on. But at least we'll get an idea of uh, is there any interest in. Uh, I keep hearing from people, oh, we really want you in the South, um, either Southwest or the Southeastern United States. Um, well, it'll be a good chance to let us know that. Uh, and uh, why don't we show you our uh, little uh, clip about CoffeeCon. Through August 1st on Indiegogo, vote for which three of six cities most crave a CoffeeCon event in 2020. Taste, try, and learn everything about coffee. CoffeeCon is for you, the enthusiast. CoffeeCon. You know, so I had a, a question. Someone asked very reasonably, why don't you go ask the trade, uh, the exhibitors, to uh, uh, fund the uh, deposits on the venues? And the, the question is that the, that's, uh, to understand corporate America, as I guess I'm uh, learning to, um, they don't have money for next year this year, or at least so they tell me. So uh, they will pay next year to be there, but they won't pay this year. And at least, uh, and they won't make any promises to pay next year either. So that's uh, where we've run into a little problems before. And as I said, I cannot uh, ask my family to uh, fund it. Uh, I need to find out. And I think it will be a sign of uh, strength to uh, the trade that consumers really want it. And it, again, in fairness to them, uh, my show has never been for them. My show is for you. My show is for consumers. It's for those of us who really love coffee and want to learn about coffee. Uh, it's not an agended show in that it's designed to sell A, B, C product. Um, and so uh, that's, uh, I think the trade sees it as, as more equitable and there's less, uh, I, uh, admit to you I'm there's less pressure on me that way basically to uh, uh, to the trade to be beholden to them as uh, the trade shows are um, so uh, anyway with that in mind let's uh, make some coffee I've got the temperature set to 195 degrees on my brim uh, kettle and I'm going to, I've got this zeroed out so I'm going to, let's see how much coffee we're going to put in here, we're going to put 70 one grams in here. I thought I measured 72, but I notice I just did a slight shake. 71 grams, and that's going to be um, whatever, uh, 10 times, uh, 15, 15 times 70 is uh, what? Uh, half again, let's see, uh, 70 plus uh, 30, uh, so we're going to be at, um, hmm, let's see. 50. Okay, we're going to, uh, let's, and what I do is always, and I will start this now, uh, the timer, I go for, um, try to give a good minute, solid minute for the grounds to pre-wet, it's called, pre-infusion, sometimes it's called, and there we go, I put a little bit of coffee in there, just like this baby would do, and, uh, this coffee, by the way, is an Ethiopian coffee from Coffee Express. Coffee Express used to be the employer of uh, my coffee con collaborator, Charlie Saren. Charlie is at every coffee con, and Charlie really is a line producer for coffee con. He makes the show happen. And uh, there we go. Uh, and it's... Now... It seems like all the water's gone through. Uh, the intuitive thing, of course, is then to pour more water through it. But I let it go a little longer because I let it, it's got a, a breathing aspect to it. And I find that it just, to be on the safe side. Okay, and there's...
I'm using a coarse grind, by the way. Coarser than I usually use. This is more coffee than I usually brew. Uh, this is a large Chemex. I usually use the medium-sized Chemex. I'd say 90% of the time I make Chemex coffee, I use this coffee maker. Um, this one uh, brews just a little bit slower, so I coarsen the grind. That way, if the contact time is prolonged, there's still no chance of bitterness. I find the Chemex one of the least bitter methods of making coffee. If you like bitterness, it's really probably not going to be your... And, and by the way, just uh, so that we're completely honest with each other, bitterness, there is a bitter note in the component of almost all coffee. I mean, it's it has a slight tang to it. It's natural. It's not a defect. Uh, so, you know, if you, but if you don't like that very much, <laughs> this is a great coffee maker for you because it really re keeps it a, in perspective. It's kind of like if you like uh, chocolate and you go for, you know, different, what's called bittersweet versus, you know, you get to milk chocolate. It's, you know, so everyone's got a place on the, on that line that they, uh, find it most satisfying. Well, I would say that uh, this coffee maker is uh, on the far end away from bitter. And here you can see if you're if we're on that overhead shot, Michael, uh, yeah, we go, you can see that it's just getting to the end of the, all the coffee is settled now, and uh, it's just going through fine. But this is a really, um, good method of extraction, and it is really exemplifies to me, uh, the strengths of, uh, drip brewing. As a, as opposed to like a siphon. There's nothing siphon-like about this coffee to me. It's very the polar opposite of it. Or espresso, which is, espresso has a higher bitterness to it. But what I'm doing right now, obviously the people who own the company said when they wanted to automate this process, their instructions to the people who built this part of it, the metal part, they didn't build this. These were, these were built by Philips, Philips in uh, Holland, and that was uh, at the time known as Norelco in the U.S. And there were actually some Norelco coffee makers. Once in a while on eBay, you'll see a Norelco coffee maker paired with one of these, and they call it uh, the Chemex, uh, but it's, it's not. It's, uh, Norelco did not have the, uh, del the uh, interrupt built into their machine that would pause it so that it dripped only a certain amount of coffee at a time. It really did uh, just use... Um, it all at once, just like any other coffee maker. As fast as the heater would would supply uh, water that was hot is how it dripped. There's nothing special about it, and it's a bad match. I, I fell for it once on eBay and uh, never again. So they're not this. They're they're the same casing, but not the same machine. And, of course, they have a Norelco logo usually on them, not a Chemex. It's pretty easy to tell. Okay.
Now this holds just enough water to uh, get us to the this particular uh, kettle for the for the large Chemex. And then, Michael, I have one request. It seems like uh, I've left the coffee cups upstairs. If you could just get two cups, just leave it on this shot. I'll talk to them for a minute. Um, the uh, everything, thanks. Everything in the U.S. So I can change the shot if I want to, but I'm, I think I'm just going to leave it alone. Um, the uh, There are a lot of, uh, I'm sure, people that have their own proprietary method of using the Chemex. I like to emulate the uh, automatic as closely as I can, which is to say I prefer a number of pours. Um, I don't mind. Uh, I just did a, a long one because I wanted to see if we needed more water, but I don't think we do. But it's, uh, I have found that... Uh, the best way is to give a number of smaller pours. It keeps the, um, the heat um, consistent um, on the grounds. In fact, we can show you that. Um, what are we brewing? We're brewing probably at about 184, 184 degrees. Are you able to see that there? Let me see if you are. 184 and... Um, Thank you. Thank you, Michael. I got uh, these are fine. Thanks very much. All right. Oh, there's a uh, yeah, 180 maybe. Um, I don't know. If uh, are any of the close-ups able to pick this up better? It's around 172 right now. Oh, should I hold it like that? Oh. What do you think? Are you able to get a... 167. 170. See, this would be right in the... But you can see the temperature drops fairly rapidly uh, at this point. I can get a, a little more out of it. There we go. See, it's back up. If I, It depends on... I don't want to poke a hole through the filter, but I want to get it in as low as I can. Whoops. This uh, thermometer has an automatic shutoff, and it's a little quick, I think, sometimes. I'm sure battery life is really good because of it, but okay, that's enough of that. And... Uh, All right, we'll see by the overhead shot that it's just coming to the end. And there we go. And you'll see how even, nice and even, you get this beautiful, uh, you get this beautiful, uh, right, like, con slightly concave bowl where the water comes through. It's one of the things, if you examine your automatic drip maker the next time you use it, see if it matches this. It just really does a beautiful job. And this is one reason that uh, those of us who um, enjoy... I'm just turning this off. Here we go. Uh, who enjoy manual brewing and the Chemex enjoy it so much. There we go. It just has a nice, very, you can just tell all the grounds contributed and uh, were thoroughly soaked and are thoroughly dry now. Uh, in fact, in just a few minutes, this will get really like a, a solid mass to it. Okay, and then uh, let's... Uh, Just put it right here. This vessel down here. Okay. All right. That should be good. All right. And then I, I try to save them for the.
compost heap. All right, and that is, uh, we don't need this anymore. That's done. Um, now we have our, our Chemex, and uh, it's nicely, you know, some people go to a lot of trouble to make sure it's mixed up and swirl it around. I, I found very little difference from the first to last cup. Unlike uh, methods like a French press, which have, um, there's some continue, not necessarily brewing going on at the bottom, but there's certainly some more sediment. This doesn't have any of that as a uh, trade-off. Let's see, your Michael is yours, and there's mine. Hmm. And of course, one thing I like about this, this is why I mentioned uh, the temperature is in the cup is about 130 degrees, which is just, for me, it's perfect. You know, this is perfect drinking temperature and well below the 149 degrees that uh, drink now uh, uh, the uh, inventor of uh, drink now the uh, that cools your drip uh, well any coffee uh, to a safe temperature. This is this is good. Uh, this is a good drinking temperature. But frankly, just as important, perhaps uh, even more important to me. I don't know if anything could be really more important seriously than health. But you also get a much more complex cup of coffee. Hmm. Really nice uh, sweetness in there. There's some, it's an Ethiopian coffee and I can tell right away it's got just a bit of a blueberry note. This is not one of the more uh, blueberry fruit bomb coffees, but it is, it's actually just very pleasant beverage, and when you have coffee like this, uh, if, if you're trying to uh, experiment with switching, and I know there's a, a certain amount of um, uh, flavor shaming going on in the world, and I think that's, I despair at that. Uh, it's, you've got a right to have your coffee how you want. If you want to put hazelnut in it, that's just fine with me. If you bought the cup, you deserve to drink it how you want it. But on the other hand, I think there is something to be said for really trying the beverage. Um, it's just a delicious beverage. And, and by the way, uh, sh sh sweeteners and um, dairy ingredients uh, have been associated with coffee for hundreds and hundreds of years. So there's no, again, no shame in, in uh, enjoying both of those. If you want to have every cup of coffee like that the rest of your life, that's just fine. The farmers still benefit, and uh, you're still getting uh, a method of, t I can tell the difference between a, a Sumatra that has uh, cream in it and a, a Colombian coffee that has cream in it. So it's not, it's not that you're not getting uh, that taste. You're not disguising the taste. I disagree with those who say you are. But there is something to be said for trying a cup of coffee like this and just seeing what it tastes like. It really tastes delicious. And, hmm. The Chemex does a superb job. This is a very rich cup of coffee, by the way. Not at all weak. And, uh, but it's, it's complex. It's got everything that you would, in my opinion, want in your coffee, and this brewer does a fantastic job. A lot of the brilliance of the Chemex is its uh, is the filter, uh, the Chemex bonded paper, which is um, I know of no other coffee maker that uses uh, paper that is similar. Uh, they've all got something different about theirs, and uh, I just. I'm very uh, pleased with the Chemex. I happen to prefer uh, paper, as you may know, as uh, for filtering coffee. Uh, other than cloth, uh, which has its own challenges, uh, I think paper is about the best. At any rate, Chemex now makes uh, another, uh, has reissued this coffee maker in a new form. They got another company to uh, collaborate with is Philips. I don't think makes any appliances like this anymore. Um, it uh, 
they were supposed to send me one, uh, and I haven't received it yet. Uh, that will, when I get it, I will be happy to bring it on and uh, discuss it with you and my observations of it. And of course, uh, they've done some modifications. I did have one for a while. I no longer have that model, uh, but they, um, an early one, uh, they claim they've done some refinements on it. So I really wouldn't, uh, I won't comment until I uh, receive the other one. But I just, uh, they are a small company in many ways. Chemex is very similar, well, at a, at a more profitable level than my company. Uh, we, they don't have a huge staff, so I, I'm sure they will send it to me. But uh, I'm very uh, pleased and overall a big fan of the Chemex. This will be, uh, I sure wish I could have brewed with this today, but I decided uh, I didn't want to take the risk based upon my uh, my test. At any rate, very attractive. Uh, some point uh, another, I hope they consider reissuing it in its original form, but that may be very, very costly at this time in history. At any rate, uh, don't forget, uh, go and check out Indiegogo. Just put CoffeeCon in there. It'll come up pretty easily. I've done it. I, I can never remember find links. And please vote for the city of your choice. Meanwhile, I'm Coffee Kevin. It's been a pleasure to uh, chat with you today, and we'll see you soon.